Good morning everybody. Guess where we're going today? It's super early and we rode our bikes down to catch the Yankee Freedom because we are going to the Dry Tortugas. It's so early, not many people are here yet. So we are waiting, we are so excited. We're gonna get to board this ferry with a bunch of other people to have a very exciting day. Here in our hands, you can see we have our boarding passes. We're number 10 and 11. So we've been waiting to get on board for quite a while. And we are so excited to be able to take you with us. I hope you enjoy this as much as we will. Madam Mayor, where are we today? What are you We're doing? On a boat going to the Dry Tortugas. The Grand Tortugas, that's so cool. Did you know only 50,000 people visit the Grand Tortugas every year? Remote national park there is. Isn't that cool? So we're on the Yankee Ferry. We're full of people, about 175. We did pick a rainy day. Three to five foot seas, but it really isn't a bad ride at all so far. We should get on the other side of the storm and it should be a nice day on the other side after we're hoping. We are riding in the boat right now and it is kind of rough as you can see. The water splashing up in the windows it kind of looks like we're in a car wash so it's a little choppy so I hope you took your Dramamine it's the one dollar insurance policy if you didn't take it beforehand you can purchase it at the station before you leave I recommend you do that the boat ride is two and a half hours each way so the good thing is you will get to know the people on the boat around you. We got lucky enough to sit with a nice family and have great conversation with them. It was a choppy ride, but we got through it. The crew on the Yankee Freedom was very attentive and helpful to everyone who wasn't feeling well. So you are in good hands and be prepared for your visit. There's a lot of great things to do. There's snorkeling, bird watching. They do offer a 20 minute talk and an extended hour tour from the tour guide in the ship that you want to take advantage of. It's no extra charge. Find your way back here to the age of three. Also on top of the fort, uh, there's that uh, lighthouse up there. That lighthouse is undergoing some restoration work right now. So today, um, the staircase underneath the lighthouse is only partially open to visitors. You can go from the bottom tier up to the second tier, but you cannot make your way all the way to the top of the fort. If you do want to get to the top of the port as quickly as possible today, you're going to go in the entrance at the end of the dock and take a left. You see that big antenna that's on the corner there. That uh, antenna is uh, above a station. It'll take you from the bottom tier up to the top tier, but you do not stop on the second tier in that corner. That corner, that's where it's housing. If your weather is good, you will want to be outside recording as you come in. As you can see, coming in from the inside of the boat, it's a little glary and some blur from the water being on the windows. So if you are able to take advantage of it, get out there and get on the deck. I don't think I've seen this many shades of blue in any body of water in my whole life. Y'all, this is absolutely amazing. 
you definitely should put this on your bucket list if you don't already have it on there. You will not be disappointed. Of that ride. It was very bumpy. It was quite rough. Hey, but we made it. We made it. And look, beautiful. the sun is out on this side. Beautiful. It is beautiful. And the crew on you know, the Yankee Freedom is amazing. For all the people that got sick, they took good care of them. Yep. So we are good hands. We know that. This is the front of the fort. Now we're gonna walk over the moat and go into the sally port. It's a pretty wide moat. And there's a lot of jellyfish inside the waters in the moat. When you look down in it, you get to see those. It's just a beautiful, breathtaking place. And the great part is not a lot of people are allowed here on a daily basis, so it's never very crowded. You get to enjoy such a beautiful, remote space with very little people. I will tell you also, when you are packing to go on this trip, make sure you just bring the essentials. Because what you pack with you, you have to carry around with you all day long. You cannot leave anything on the boat. walk into the fort just to your right there's a little visitor center which has a small little museum informational room where you can read about a few of the things 
there did appear to be a bookstore that was not open at the time. So you'll spend a few minutes in here and this is also where you can get your passport book stamped if you have one of the books for the national parks. And you can just go through this room and read about a few of the things and see some of the artifacts. inside of the fort. Just wanted to take a look and see what you can see outside. There's the boat that we came in on and we're going to explore more of the inside of the fort in our next video. Pretty neat. Pretty awesome. Nice breeze through here today. Every day before I start giving it to her that deep down inside it seems to be hoping Whenever this is done for you, whenever you decide to walk away from the talk, you decide to walk away from the tour, maybe a couple of you can walk away and take that. Wow! That was a lot better than I expected it was going to be. You know what I mean? Uh, but I realized over the last several years, the only way I can consistently get this to happen, I need to start off right now and ask all of you to take just a quick moment right now and please, please get your expectations low. <laughs> right? Lower your expectations. I want this to be great for you today, so you get way, way down there. Get out of the way. In one moment, we're going to hop inside the fort. Once we get inside there, you will find some park benches. You can sit down on a park bench, lay on the grass, work on your tan for a little bit, or lean up against a shade tree. I'll give you a 20 minute talk. After okay, that, you guys can explore the fort more on your own. Hit the boat for lunch, go over to the beach, or if you'd like to, you can join me through the part of the whole night's extended tour. Uh, but before I'm allowed to take anybody inside, I'm first mandated by the Park Service uh, to give you yet another safety briefing. And I'm really sorry, I've already heard this several times. Please understand the Park Service is trying hard not to modernize or gentrify the port. They're trying to keep it the way it was back in the 1800s. It does not have modern day safety standards. Tripping hazards are everywhere. It's not lit. There's no handrails in the staircases. Before I move around, please go slowly, carefully watch your staff. By watching your step, if you see anything on the ground that looks under the ground around it, anything you can do to potentially be coming up a hole in the floor, please avoid those spots. Even once you're looking at it strong enough to hold your weight from holding it up may not be. Second and third tier, obviously no handrails, no white lines, no safety nets. Also, obviously we're missing lots of brick on our fort walls. This is an old fort, we have loose bricks that'll fall from time to time. Please make sure nobody goes near the edge of the fort. You have to come out of loose brick and lose your balance. You can fly 45 feet. You are literally hours away from the nearest hospital. And on the first two tiers, if you're going to stop to listen to me, read a sign, or take a photo, please look up. You see the bricks are missing some uh, mortar around them. Don't stand underneath them. You have these signage booms out here. We don't want those bricks falling on you. Okay, let's hop inside get this party started, guys. And consider for a few minutes what would it been like to try to build something like this. All the way out here back then, I think it becomes an amazing story for us. I'm sure you've already realized that there's not a lot of stuff out here in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, right? It's been over an hour since we passed our last piece of land in our cases. And then you finally get out here to the dry tortugas, you look around, it's just seven little islands. Most of which are really nothing more than coral and sand. But even on the larger islands we do have out here, like the one you're on right now, Garden Key, I mean, look around. What do you have? We've got some scrub trees here inside the fort, right? I'm sure you saw a couple palm trees outside. There's some 
cactus scattered about. But if you were trying to build a fort like this here, you would quickly realize that we really only have three materials that are found here in the dry torch here that you can use in this sort of construction. And those three materials happen to be sand, salt water, and coral. That means that everything else you see out here right now all had to get shipped out here, right? And when you start to break that down, it's kind of insane. Right now, right now you're looking at approximately 16 million bricks. 16 million who went into construction of this fort. We just walked through the Sally Port, the only way in and out of Fort Jefferson. You see that the Sally Port walls are maybe those big pieces of granite, right? Well, in addition to the granite that we use for the Sally Port, you can also see that we use granite for the foundation of many of the buildings that were here inside of them. We have a slab of granite below every opening or embrasure on the first tier. And if you go up any of our staircases today, you're going to find that all six of our spiral staircases are made of these massive, massive slabs of granite. We also had to bring out lumber, lumber for scaffolding, for framing in the masonry work, for the insides of the buildings. Did anybody here just happen to notice the stone that you walked across when we came through the Sally Port? It looks a little bit like slate <coughs> for most people. And I'm sure you all know that slate's heavy because we've all tried to cheat at a game of pool on the double pool table, right? <laughs> okay, that's awkward. Uh, <laughs> forget it. I guess you have to trust me. Slate is really, really heavy. All right? and, and look, if you don't believe me, next time you see a pool table, go ahead and try to pick one up. It's going to be heavy as this thin layer of stone, this slate that's in those tables. But the stone that we walked across through the Sally Port, folks, is much, much heavier than slate. It's a stone called gray wacky. It's much thicker, it's much denser, much stronger, but because of that, much, much heavier than slate. And we didn't use that special stone just for the floor of that one little room. We had to use this stone for the floor and the entire first tier of this fort. And we had to use this special stone because of the weight and the power of the cannons we had here. The cannons we had at Fort Jefferson, they were so powerful and heavy that if you fired them on top of slate, they pulverized slate. So you got to bring on that thicker, heavier, denser stone for your floors. And, and then there's this cement. I mean, can you imagine how many barrels of cement would get shipped out here to build just one of these rooms, right? <laughs> Let alone this entire fort. And then don't forget about the cement that went in the foundation underneath it all. Look, this is a massive amount of heavy stuff to be bringing all the way out here. And keep in mind, it's not going to get shipped out here on an 800 foot or a thousand foot container ship, but with big cranes to help you offload it. This is all getting shipped out here in the early 1800s on wooden sailing ships that, that you have to manually offload. I mean, even the trip out here blows my mind. What took us two and a half hours today to get from Key West to here you understand what it would have taken those ships back then, 10 to 20 hours to make this same trip? <coughs> and that's just to get from Key West to here. You understand, though, that there was no road to Key West back then. So the supplies we're talking about, the granite, the gray, regular lumber, all this stuff is actually getting shipped to us from Massachusetts, Vermont, New York. One of the closest places is Pensacola, Florida. See, we are literally looking at days to weeks worth of travel time. Going through horrible storms and bad weather, much, much worse than what we just went through today, right? Just to get out here to the dock. And honestly, that's only if you were lucky enough to get to the dock. To be frank with you, many of those boats back then, they never even made it to the dock, right? But if you happen to be on one of those ships who was lucky enough to make it all the way out here, well, once you got here, that's when you got to look forward to manually offloading all that heavy stuff. <laughs> and then some of you, some of you would be fortunate enough to get to stay out here, right? On this tropical island, trying to build a masonry fort in the tropical heat. And we're not talking about today's weather, folks. This is literally a cold winter day here in the dry tour <laughs> okay? It's normally much, much, much hotter than this. And then that's something else. Not only do you have to bring out the majority of the materials to build this fort, but you understand that nobody even lived out here before this. So you have to ship out all the labor to build the fort. And if you're going to bring people out here to build the fort, you've got to bring them out food to eat, right? Do you realize we don't even have any fresh water out here? That means you also have to bring out fresh water or wait for them to make fresh water. 
when I realized how difficult it was going to be to build anything all the way out here back then, I was shocked when I found out the United States of America had decided to build the most powerful fortification the country was going to build all the way out here. Especially, especially once you realize that even once this fort is, is completed, you all understand that any ship can literally just sail right around the range of its cannons, right? But when I realized all this, there was just one question that popped into my head. And I'm sure it's the same question that's in all of your heads right now as well. What? What did they say it was 60 million bricks or something like that? 16 million. Oh, 16 million. Either way, a lot of bricks. Hey, did you notice walking up on the other side there was piles of the brick and metal that was eroded? Eroded and no good fell out, like piled up in where we were walking. And he said this chain of <laughs> islands, there used to be 11 of them, and now there are seven left. The water is such a pretty blue color, isn't it? Yes. And there's also part of the moat wall missing now. The yeah. The foot section came out. On the other side, yeah. <clears throat> wow, what a bad job. Yeah. It looks like the walkway to nowhere, doesn't it? I see. <laughs> Thank you. 
What do you think? It's so amazing. Pretty neat. It was a long ride getting out here, about two and a half hours, and it was very choppy. It's not the greatest of weather days, but it's just an amazing experience to get to do all together. I think yeah. it would be really neat to camp here for a night or two. Yeah, it would. That would be pretty awesome if you're out here with nothing and nobody. So you got to make sure you bring all your supplies that you would need if you do that. But yeah. look out, like there's nothing around you. The, the tour provided uh, snacks this morning, a bagel, and then uh, Jersey Mike's lunch. So you can't complain. They put out cookies and you had choice of... Oh yeah, the lunch was really good. You got a nice choice little some drinks. Yeah. And there Chips, was... cookies, carrots, celery, a drink. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, they really provided well. You see that? Yeah, there. Yeah. I wouldn't even go this way unless you're wearing the right <clears throat> shoes. And... Yeah, I don't see any need to cross this area here because you get up there and you can't cross at all. So. The waters are beautiful. Yeah, they're gorgeous. I don't know if circling is going to be a good option for the day with this weather. There might not be good visibility. You really have limited time. You get here at 1030 and you have to board again at 245. And then there's a couple of... Um, um, guided tours. One was 20 minutes. We did listen to that one and then he was going to talk for another 40 minutes. But um, we abstained from that one just so we could get to see everything. So we'll head back around and we'll see you inside.